this is a nice thing. So people have been wasting their time in, <laughs> when they should be at work uh, making pictures of this thing, which I can just freely download because they're all on Wikipedia. and they're all, I'm allowed to do it. Uh, so this is one that's made in some kind of sort of rubbery model. Uh, and this is actually my favorite one here. This is made out of shiny titanium with gold spheres holding it together. Uh, so that's, that's another picture. And you'll, you'll see that these dodecahedra, they don't look like regular dodecahedra. They look quite warped, like this, this side here is a lot bigger than those sides. But that's because we've tried to take this thing that really wants to be evenly spread out around the surface of a three-dimensional sphere and squashed it into this little flat piece of, 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 sp of space that we see in this picture. So it's sort of a warped image of the real thing. And that's the best we can do right now. Um, and I want to wind up by telling you another way to get at this shape. So this is supposed to be the part of the talk that doesn't make any sense. There's a tradition in math talks where like, you start out saying stuff that makes sense to everyone in the room, and then like halfway through, you switch. You get more advanced, and you talk so that like only half the people in the room do it. And then you keep doing that until finally even you don't know what you're talking about. But, <laughs> but, but no one else knows, see? So it's OK. Um, so this is going to be like that part. Um, so in other words, you're not supposed to be upset if you don't understand this. You're supposed to think, I went to like a real math talk, just like a, like a real professional math talk. Um, so, so the dodecahedron has some 60 things. There, there are 60 ways to take a dodecahedron and turn it so that it comes back to being in more or less the same position. But maybe the faces have gotten mixed up. So for example, I could take, I could take any, I could put my fingers on any face and, and the opposite face. And I could turn it a fifth of a turn, and it would come back looking more or less the same shape. Let's see if I can actually do that. So like that, that, that. Those are called rotational symmetries of the dodecahedron. So I could do that in five ways there. But I had a choice of, uh, I had a choice of something. I'm getting really confused right now. I, I see. I guess I already reached the point where even I don't know what I'm doing. Um, there are 12 of something. Yeah, oh, I was thinking about it a slightly different way here. I was thinking that I could take, yeah, I should read this slide here. Um, <laughs> so I, I, I could take, I could, with a rotation, I could carry any one of these faces to any other tw of the 12, or itself for that matter. But I could do that in five different ways, because there'd be five ways it could wind up being rotated. So there are five times 12 ways to rotate this thing that are the symmetries. And that's 60, which is half of 120 the 120 that shows up in the 120 cell. So you may say, huh, is there some relationship between that 60 rotational symmetries of the dodecahedron and the 120 dodecahedra in the 120 cell? And it turns out that there is a relation. But where does that, what's that relation? Well, there's an interesting thing. There's a kind of particle called a spinner. And an electron is an example, and so is a proton. And it's discovered something amazing about them, namely that if you take a spinner one of these kind of particles, and you turn it around 360 degrees, it doesn't come back to where it was. You might think that if you turn something around 360 degrees, it has to be exactly where it was. That's common sense. But it turns out it's not true. That's called higher education. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, 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 uh, and so it turns out that if you, but if you turn it around twice, it does come back to where it was. That's an amazing fact that was discovered as part of the whole idea of quantum mechanics. And I'm not going to try to explain that, but, it, but, it's, but I, I could if I wanted to. And, <laughs> and, and so the point is, if I had a dodecahedron that was a spinner, there would be a difference between turning it around 360 degrees and not. So there would be twice as many different symmetries uh, as, as you might naively and sensibly think. So there'd be 120 symmetries. And it turns out that each of those 120 symmetries of the spinner dodecahedron, let's call it, is the same as one of the dodecahedra in the 120 cell. So that's a very strange combination of ideas. And, the, and you can sort of begin to see it's true because of all these symmetries, each one of them has 12 nearest neighbors. So there are tons of ways to rotate this thing, but each way to rotate it has 12 different ways that are really similar, namely 
do that rotation, but then just rotate one extra fifth of a turn. That's just slightly different. That's the closest thing you can, you can do to not doing anything at all, is rotate this thing a fifth of a turn. But you could do that fifth of a turn around six different axes, and you could go either clockwise or counterclockwise. So there are 12 nearest neighbors to each of the rotations of this spinner dodecahedron. But they're also, going back to this picture, they're 12 nearest neighbors for each of the dodecahedra in this horrible thing here. So it turns out, oh, I should, should have just done that. Uh, so it turns out that this 120 cell, among other things, it's also a picture of all the rotational symmetries of the spinner dodecahedron. So each of the dodecahedra in this picture is also a rotational symmetry of this spinner dodecahedron. So that's just an example of how things can get fairly elaborate and interesting when you start messing around with math in general or the number five in particular. And uh, Rankin, who's, uh, who I'm lecturing in honor of, he actually spent a lot of time studying papers by this Indian mathematician Ramanujan. And what Ramanujan did is just write down insane formulas and say, I know this is true and then leave it to other people to figure out why. <laughs> and this is one of the ones that I really like. This is one of the Ramanujan continued fractions. So this is a weird continued fraction where you have ones down here and then e to the negative 2 pi, e to the negative 4 pi, e to the negative 6 pi, and so on. <coughs> and he wrote this down. That that's equal to, obviously, the square root of 5 plus the square root of 5 over 2 plus minus the golden ratio times e to the 2 pi over 5. So there's some thing really cool about this because this right hand side is very fivey. There's like fives bristling all, with, all over the place with it. This doesn't seem particularly fivey at all. So it shows, <coughs> excuse me, that there's some deep and mysterious ways in which the number five can show up. And I hope someday I really understand why this formula is true. I have a paper about it that I, that I got off the internet that explains it, but I don't understand it. <laughs> uh, so. In any event, I dedicate this lecture to him, and thanks for listening to me.